Hey, what's up guys, Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna break down what the research says about building muscle and losing fat at the same time. If we wanna optimally build muscle, the recommendation is often to use a calorie surplus to optimally build muscle mass. But if we wanna optimally lose fat mass, we would use a calorie deficit. But what if we wanna do both and we're trying to build muscle and lose fat mass to get to our body composition goals? Do we use a recomposition strategy with maintenance calories or do we do a combination of different approaches with some gaining, some cutting, and some maintenance work? We're gonna take a look at the research to figure out the pros and cons of these different strategies to figure out which one's best for you. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So to start off, we're gonna be looking at this research study which quantified the lean body mass and strength gains or losses with varying degrees of energy deficit. This is a meta-analysis, which means it included smaller studies. So it included seven studies in its main analysis, which all had different protocols in terms of how many sets and reps the participants were training with. These seven randomized controlled trials were part of this meta-analysis of the research. What this means is that there wasn't one intervention in a small group of people. This is more showing what the overall body of research is showing us. The seven randomized controlled trials included in this meta-analysis varied from eight to 20 weeks in terms of the intervention length and included resistance training protocols with two to three sets of eight to 20 reps. Out of the total of 282 participants included in the main analysis, many of them were untrained, so that will affect our results and how we interpret them a little bit. On the plus side, all of these randomized controlled trials did use a DEXA scan, which gets us pretty good accurate data on body composition changes. So let's go ahead and dive into the results here. What you can see in this graph is that the triangles represent participant groups that were in an energy deficit and the circles represent the control groups. You can clearly see just starting to look at this graph that the overall trend is that as we're in a greater calorie deficit, we have less gain in lean body mass. The control groups which are represented in those circles are largely above that zero line, meaning they gained lean body mass, whereas many of the intervention groups which were in a larger calorie deficit are actually below the line, meaning that they lost lean body mass. The energy deficit on the x-axis is a daily calorie deficit, meaning that if they were in a 500 calorie daily deficit, which is a pretty common recommendation for weight loss, they would be losing about one pound per week. A 1,000 calorie daily deficit is pretty aggressive and you can see that that resulted in a lot of lean body mass loss. The researchers quantified this loss saying, the impairment of lean mass gains scaled with severity of energy deficit. What this means is that with a more substantial calorie deficit, we saw more loss of lean body mass. The crossover point with this specific group in this specific study was around 500 calorie per day deficit, meaning that with about a 500 calorie per day deficit, these participants on average weren't able to increase their lean body mass or gain hypertrophy. So to summarize what the research is showing us so far, the more that we cut our calories, the less that we're able to build muscle. If you're wondering why this is the case, a lot of this impairment comes from the endocrine system. One thing that the researchers mentioned was, Energy deficits directly impair insulin-like growth factor 1 production and reduce serum concentrations in a dose-dependent manner. IGF-1 is not the only hormone that's causing this deficit to be seen. It's just an example of how the endocrine system can play a role in this result. This is important to understand because if you're taking advice from enhanced lifters who don't have the same endocrine system function as you do, they could be giving bad advice based on their own experience. So a calorie deficit does significantly impair hypertrophy. However, what is the impact on strength? If we compare these two graphs here, what you can see is that on the top, we're comparing lean body mass gains in an energy deficient versus a control group. There's a statistically significant negative effect here where a calorie deficit is leading to significantly less lean body mass gain or hypertrophy. However, on the bottom, you can see that the results are more mixed. The overall trend is still towards some loss of strength with a calorie deficit. However, there's not a statistically significant decrease in strength from that calorie deficit. The study concluded this. Overall, our results suggest the presence of an energy deficit impairs the accretion of lean mass, but not strength gains in response to resistance training. What this means is that the process of muscle hypertrophy and increasing lean body mass is a bit more calorie intensive. The process of building strength relies heavily on neuromuscular adaptations, which can still be seen in a calorie deficit. This has really important practical implications now as we move to the takeaways and how we actually use this research. One main takeaway is that it's not optimal to build muscle hypertrophy in a calorie deficit. 
Also, it's important to note that the larger the deficit, the greater the impairment. So if we're trying to optimize lean body mass gain, we really want to avoid big calorie deficits. It's also harder to maintain lean body mass during a cut with larger deficits. So if we are cutting or we're in a calorie deficit and we're trying to maintain lean body mass, it may be more effective to do a longer cut with a smaller calorie deficit than a more rapid cut. Doing a cut with a smaller calorie deficit over a long period of time may be more effective for preserving lean body mass and muscle hypertrophy. But getting back to the question, what do we do if we want to build muscle and lose fat? There are pros and cons to different strategies here. We can take the recomposition approach where we're essentially using maintenance calories and do that for a while. The pros here is that we won't see a lot of loss of lean body mass that we would in a big calorie deficit. However, the cons are that we're also not going to build that much muscle. So by taking this approach, you're limiting your potential for gain and you're also limiting your potential for loss. This can be a really effective strategy, especially in the short term or if you're untrained or if you're undertrained. However, it's probably not the best strategy for year-round optimal development. If you want to set yourself up for long-term development, there are probably still going to be periods throughout the year where we want to use a bulking and cutting approach with maybe two or three blocks of training that's focused on gaining hypertrophy and then one or two blocks of training that's focused on cutting fat mass. Some of the pros of the bulking and cutting strategy is that we can gain significantly more muscle hypertrophy in a calorie surplus. Of course, on the con side, we also will be gaining some amount of fat mass. There are a lot of individual variables here. For example, if you're an endurance athlete like myself, you may just want to focus on maintaining your weight throughout the year and fueling for performance. There wouldn't be a huge benefit to doing a bulk and cut that you would see if your goal was more body composition oriented. Overall, it's important to realize there's individual context to this decision, and it's not that one approach is better overall and recomposition overall is better than gaining and bulking. It's just about optimizing for the specific outcome that you're training for. By understanding this research, we can make the specific decisions, for example, for an undersized bodybuilder to be doing four phases of bulking with hypertrophy training, followed by one phase of cutting where we focus more on strength and neuromuscular adaptations. This may set that specific athlete up for better long-term development, whereas a different athlete who has enough lean body mass already, but just needs to cut down more so, may choose a combination of recomposition blocks and cutting blocks to get towards their specific goals. So hopefully this showed you some of the pros and cons of these different approaches and what might be best for you or the clients that you're training. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. If you wanna dive into this research farther, I will link it in the description. And if you have a strong opinion on what's worked for you and your own experience, go ahead and drop it in the comments below as well. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.